Last Friday in March. You know, that means uh, on a Friday, talk with former Wolverine Jerry Diario. He joins us. He's on the screen, and he's ready to kick this show off on a Friday. Jerry, great to see you. How are you? Great seeing you, Denny. Great to be a Michigan Wolverine. Well, hey, I want to I I say one thing. I got to tell you, you guys did one heck of a show on Wednesday. You and Scar, I mean, that insider information, that was outstanding. And um, uh, got a lot of good insight. And um, it, it was good to, to hear all that information coming out of you two. It was great. You guys well, did a great job. You know, it was a scar as a former player and coach that was down there. He was in his element and he was able to tell everybody what he saw and, and brought it to the podcast. I agree. He did a, a fabulous job uh, working through and, you know, giving us what a, a little bit of taste of what was going down there. It was a great day. You know, when you think of all the things I would, I call it pop and circumstance uh, a little bit when you got practice, but you have the, the national champs back there and so many, coaches and a record number of NFL personnel there to watch Michigan work out on their pro day. You don't get many of those. And I've been down to uh, Ann Arbor or the football building, actually the field house a couple times since uh, the, the championship. And they've got the, the background you see in the backdrop, you know, Hey, national champ banner. You look up in the, in the field house and you know, you, you see the banners up there and it's like, okay, you know, they're, and, and, and the people that are working there, you see all the national championship gear. I mean, it's noticeable. That's good. I mean, these are remnants of a, a championship season and uh, you know, all of that. Uh, enjoy it while you can, you know, uh, it come, in it. doesn't come every year, Denny. That's no, sure. no, it doesn't. And it, you know, I don't know. So you saw the, the trophy case and that's another thing, you know, nobody, Across the country, I don't know if anybody, I haven't seen, I know all the football buildings try to jazz things up and everybody else, but nobody has as nice a wall right now as uh, as Michigan because they got that national championship trophy, but everything else in there with the shoes and the trophies, and it's just, uh, uh, it's a great sight to see. I, I've never seen that thing in person, but um, I like looking at pictures of it, and I saw the updated one with the national championship trophy in there, and it looked pretty cool. The only time I was jealous of anybody up north, Denny, is you guys out there going to Michigan practices. That that made me jealous a little bit, Denny. But, uh, no, you guys did a fantastic job. Both of you guys did. Well, if anybody missed that episode, you can always just go right on YouTube or the podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, and you're able to listen to it. And, uh, of course, watch it on YouTube. It's available there all the time. Whatever we say here, Jerry, it's going to be down forever. You know, on the internet, we can go back from all the way through the season and and and, and relive it and and watch those shows as they were going on. I, well, you know, with uh, with spring practice, all the different things that are going on. You know, the the quarterback position and the part where if, if Jim Harbaugh, even if he stayed, he was not going to have JJ McCarthy. JJ McCarthy was going to go to the pros, so we'd be sitting here. I know some people might argue maybe he would have stayed around. All right, well, let's just say that he would have gone uh, pro. You know, it's part of football. You've got to replace starters. You'd, you'd love to have J.J. McCarthy for 10 years at quarterback. You get a good one like that. But, you know, now they've got uh, to replace the most important position. And I wanted to ask you how you are viewing the quarterback room heading into spring. Now, you you know, they've, they've had a few practices. So you're reading a little bit. You're hearing a little bit. Uh, just how you're looking at uh, the, the Michigan football quarterback room in 2024 well first of all you know you got to be a little bit concerned with Tuttle not practicing and and uh this early in the spring uh, when he's competing for a job there must be something very you know kind of serious about uh his injury so that that is a uh that's a problem and, and uh, but it also indicates to me that um orgy and uh and Denigo are, are fighting it out for the uh, job and uh I could be very open to a, and I know a lot of people don't like, and I don't think you do at all, Denny, but uh, when you have two unique quarterbacks like this, I think uh, Orgy is is very gifted in the pocket. I think he could stay there and, and, and throw. He's got a rifle for an arm. He's much, I think he's uh, more accurate than Orgy. Um, so that is a, uh, a good viable replacement. Um, 
Alex Orgy presents a whole different problem. I was reading an article today and, and um, Mason Graham was talking about how Orgy is really impressing him because you don't know what he's going to do. He can run. He can get out of the pocket. He, he presents so many more issues than that drop back uh, pocket present quarterback. And I'm not even saying Denigal's like that because, like I said, when, when I saw Denigal, I was impressed not only with his arm strength, but also his uh, um, uh, agility and uh, ability to uh, uh, run and, and maneuver. And so I like Denigal's uh, um, mobility back there. But, uh, uh, you know, according to Mason in this one article, he's uh, as a defense alignment, he doesn't want to see Alex Orgy uh, at quarterback. So – yeah, you know, every 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 situation is different. In general, I don't like it as it means that nobody sees the job and that you you know you the quarterback you, to me you know you you have the one leader and you know you you have the one guy and when you start having two, then there can be factions with the, the team and certainly the fan like they want this guy and if the one guy. Uh, you know, he doesn't do something one series. The fans are clamoring for the backup. The backup's always the most popular Absolutely. player on the team. And so if you're out there and the, whoever is and they're flip-flopping them around, it just creates a lot of chaos. You need a very – you need strong leadership on the team, and you need a head coach that is able to battle the media then. I say battle because you know heading in there – that the questions are going to be coming fast and furious about, okay, well, you know, what's your plan with Denigal? What's your plan with Orgy? You're going to play the one in the first quarter. What are you going to do here? You know, if you have one, then you're just going now last uh, two years ago, I should say, not last year, last year, we all knew it was going to be JJ and, and he was out there, but two years ago when Michigan had the, the uh, exhibition season with the, yeah. you know, the schedule that they had and Harbaugh came out and said, look, we're just going to have a battle Royal in the first two games. We're going to give Cade the first game. We're going to give JJ the third game. Then we're going to go from there. I liked how that went. I mean, he knew. I think coaches in the past, they they uh, might have tiptoed in there and said, no, we, we can't. It's uh, We can't take anybody lightly, and that make us look like – and Harbaugh was like, you know, didn't say they were taking anybody lightly, but also knew that they could have put Mason Graham at quarterback and won those games. So he, he did play it out like that. So – I hope somebody uh, after spring, they have a pretty good indication, like, you know what, this is really the guy. And then he steps up in the summer phase and then seizes it in fall camp. Now that's the best laid plans. If uh, they're still battling somebody and, and they decide let's go into Fresno and we're going to play both of them, whatever the plan is, one series, two series, first quarter, second quarter, first half, second half. I don't know. However it would be because I, I think they can handle that game. But for well, Texas, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to be going into Texas, Jerry, thinking that you're going to start Orgy and then, you know, uh, Denigal's coming into the third series. I wouldn't want that. You you don't have the luxury we had two years ago when we could uh, um, play one quarterback one game and another quarterback the other game and see where it uh, uh, played out. Um, you know, game two is Texas, so we we've got to go into the season with a pretty good. Uh, you got it, Danny. Your horns down. Um, we got to have a, a pretty good idea of where our quarterback situation is uh, going into uh, week two. So, yeah, you're right. We got to come out of uh, out of uh, spring ball, out of uh, fall camp, um, which hopefully with somebody uh, that's um, propelled themselves ahead. But um, you know, right now, I, I I like the fact that we have two very good quarterbacks competing. And like I said, I saw both of them. Um, and, and I like that goal and I like orgy and I like them for different reasons. And, uh, um, you know, it's good to see we have some competition going in. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a, there's a lot, we could just sit here and talk about a lot of good things about Michigan and, and the quarterback position. And then we could also just sit here and, and, you know, gnaw our arms off talking about some of the concerns. So, you know, I, I'll look at a little bit of both of these and the, and the part, with Sharon Moore, he has to follow Jim Harbaugh, which is a legend, and they just won the national championship. And your every move and every game, you're going to be compared to the national championship team. They set the standard. That is what it is. You can't get away from that. You can't hide it. You know that. And also, I would say with a quarterback position, J.J. McCarthy was the best quarterback that Michigan's ever had. You're talking about Harbaugh, the best season, and maybe the best coach 
and the two most important pieces for a football team, your head coach and your quarterback, both of these guys, whoever that QB is, you're following a legend. That's the tough part, but you, you know that, and you know, it's Michigan and you know, a lot of teams across the country, nobody gets to keep their quarterback. You, you know, you, you've got to change. That's a part of the game. And the good thing, whoever that QB is, he's going to have a rock solid defense and what it looks like right now. That's a quarterback's best friend. And Jerry, I know, you know, cause I hear guys like you talk about all the time, the second best, uh, or you know what you could say going out there is going to be your best friend on offense is a running game and Michigan has a running game. And, you know, I just was looking through some of uh, uh, JJ's games last year. They started the big 10 JJ threw the ball 16 times against Rutgers, 20 times against Maryland, 17 times against Indiana. That was the first three games. That's not a lot. It's that's not, pass happy or anything. He only threw the ball eight times against Penn state, as you know, and everybody remembers because of the 32 straight runs Mm -hmm. in the second half. The point there is that most teams, if you think about putting together a championship team, you say, you better have the quarterback and he better be the one that's going to lead the way three years ago. Kate McNamara, he did a nice job, but he wasn't the focal point of the offense and Michigan was able to beat Ohio state and get to the and win the Big Ten and get to the college football playoff. And whoever this QB is, he's got a stable full of running backs, a really good defense, and he's not going to be asked to win games necessarily. Manage the games, don't turn the ball over, and this thing can be a success. I don't want to make it sound like they can't have a successful season because I think they can, but a lot of those factors in there, whoever that QB is, even though there's going to be a lot of talk about them, Everybody's going to be obviously very visible and everything else. He doesn't have to be J.J. McCarthy. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head, Denny. Um, let, let's say it's not one and two. Let's say it's one and one A, like you're betting on a freaking horse uh, combo at the Derby, okay? Yeah. You better be able to stop the run, and you better be able to run the ball. I mean, look throughout history. Those are the teams that historically win ball games, and, and, and Michigan has that formula down. And um, I, I see uh, um, our defense is going to be as solid as uh, I, I've seen in a long time. You know, we did have a – we had a couple of huge losses at the same position. I mean, we lost uh, Rod Moore and, and Sab, um, you know, basically in the same position. Now we're going down to three. But I think there's plenty of talent on that defensive uh, roster where we we can get uh, somebody to fill in and then maybe even a, a wide receiver – that, uh, that could come over kind of like Sanistro did uh, a couple years ago. So defensively, I think we're going to be very solid. Uh, despite what's going on right now at that one position, I think we're going to be very solid. But um, the nice thing that I'm, I'm hearing coming out of spring ball is the effectiveness of our offensive line, the size of Donovan Edwards, um, the, uh, the additional speed of Mullins. Uh, these make – huge developments on the run game. And so when you can run the ball, it's a lot easier to throw the ball when you got a defense that's got eight and nine guys in the box to try to stop a run. Now they got to cover uh, deep with two. So um, I, I'm very excited about those two aspects going into the season. Absolutely. Former offensive lineman, Jerry Diario, and it was a good transition. I'll use it as a tease because you mentioned Rod Moore and, We'll get to that in one minute from right now. The last thing I'm going to say on the QBs, I have compared Alex Orgy because of his strength to Jalen Hurts with the uh, Eagles. The, the amount of mon- uh, the amount of weight that he is able to squat is, I think he's going to be the strongest quarterback in all of, uh, of college football. And he might be able to get under that squat rack with Jalen Hurts right now. That's the kind of athlete he is. And we have seen him run the ball and, Harbaugh last year during the Rose Bowl uh, news conferences said uh, Jalen Milrow reminded him of a little more polished Alex Orgy. So the comp there, you understand. And you know, I think going to last year's Alabama team and the game that they played, their second game at home in Tuscaloosa was against Sark and Texas, who's coming into Michigan. So Milrow in that game. Through two interceptions. 
He was 14 of 27. You're going to want to be a little bit better than that. You know, a 52% completion percentage. He threw two TDs, which is fine. But now those are the things that are going to jump out at you. Don't don't throw two interceptions. How about that, Alex Orgy? If you're going to be the QB, if you can protect the ball, you don't have to throw it 27 times. I, I think that if I said, Jerry, I'll ask you the question. I'm just, you know, rambling on. If if Orgy only has to throw the ball 20 times against Texas and he, he just stays clean where he doesn't turn the ball over, I think Michigan's going to have a pretty good chance at home to beat the Longhorns. What do you I, I think that means two things, Danny. I think, number one, if we're only throwing the ball 20 times, I don't think Texas is going to score 38 points like they did against Alabama. And that's where the running game really comes into play. Now we're shortening up the game and we're taking the game – we're taking the pace of the game, and we're making it our pace, not their pace. By the way, thank you, Richard. Yes, happy Easter. Happy uh, Good Friday. Um, thank, thank you, Richard. I appreciate you by mentioning that. Um, what I think is the most important thing coming out of this spring, I think it's down to two quarterbacks right now. Maybe the freshman, but I, I'm a little bit real, uh, concerned with Tuttle. Right now, what I think – needs to come out of spring practice is the proper system for both quarterbacks. In other words, you know, you're going into spring. These quarterbacks not, might not be looking as great, but remember, they don't have the system and the coaches don't have the system for them right now. So they're going to be looking at what system am I going to run within our base framework, our base runs package, OK, what system is going to fit these two quarterbacks? And I think that's a primary uh, um, objective uh, coming out of spring ball for our quarterback position. I think if we're only throwing the ball 20 times, that means Texas isn't scoring 35 and 38 points. And that's in our favor. So I like the fact that we're, we're, we, we still have that same basic thought process. Now let's kind of fine tune it, sharpen up the edges. Make that system work for the quarterback that wins the job, and and, and that's where I I see it. Um, I'm all I'm more than happy with us throwing uh, twenty or less. I'm with you on that, and you know Michigan. This is the way that they have been playing football for the last three years, and while everybody's going to be obsessed, our, our, I think ourselves included, with the quarterback, knowing that the running back is going to be just as important or more important at Michigan. I don't know if there's any other team in the country that is going to be able to say that, that, you know, hey, what do you think about Michigan's quarterback? Well, what do you think about Donovan Edwards, Khalil Mullings, and, uh, you know, the rest of the guys that are going to be out there like Ben Hall? That, you know, that might be the thing, right? So we've got a lot of questions about football, which we're going to get to after two things. We're going to talk about Rod Moore, and then we are going to talk about Michigan hockey. So all of your questions that you're asking, we like those in real time. We are going to get to those, I would say, in 10 minutes from right now, before 2.30, we will get to the, the questions. You mentioned Rod Moore, and Rod Moore looks like he's going to be lost for the season with a um, with an injury. So he's not going to be there. So, Jerry, there's a, I don't know how, if there's any nice way to put this uh, with you, you, one of your star players being out. I mean, that's obviously really bad news. So, uh, you know, how are you looking at it? You're a former player. You're a former coach. No Rod Moore. What do you do if you're a Michigan coach? What do you do if you're a Michigan fan? Well, you know, like you know, I said it earlier, Denny, um, it, it, we didn't lose one. We lost two at the, basically the same position. So mm. now we're really going into our uh, our, our depth chart. And uh, good thing we've got some fresh uh, a couple of freshmen coming in uh, that might be able to uh, spill the bill, uh, uh, um, ease us a little bit in that. Um, I do know we've got a lot of talent in that secondary room, in that, uh, in, in that coach's room, that uh, uh, position room, we've got a lot of talent in the secondary. Uh, to lose Rod Moore, to lose Sav, that's a lot of experience. We're going to need to find somebody in that secondary that's going to be the quarterback because that's what Santa still was. That's what Rod Moore was. He was number two. These guys were the guys helping us get in the positions that we needed to be in, the coverages we needed to be in. So now all of a sudden the big – problem I see with losing these two is not so much the talent, but the brain trust and, and the uh, 
the ability to recognize what the offense is trying to do and, and get us in the right position. So that's what's going to have to come out of spring ball on the defensive side in the secondary. Who's going to step up? Who's going to be the intelligence in the secondary that can uh, that can pick up the pace for uh, for those two exits? Great point. Great point, on You're not losing just one. You're losing two, which isn't fun to think about. But the whole thing about him being the quarterback uh, of the uh, at the back end there, Wink Martindale, the first time he was available to the media, he talked about Rod Moore and just how smart he was. And he said he reminded him of a safety he had at Baltimore named Eric Weddle, who was the smartest guy that he's ever been around. And, you know, he's a great football player. Most people know. Weddle's name, and he was thinking that Rod Moore, but he said, I had Rod Moore, and this guy, he knows it. So uh, for me, though, there's it, it's, it's terrible, non-football, uh, non-contact uh, injury there. You know, those are usually bad. But if this happened in late August in camp, uh, it, it's bad, but it would be worse because you don't have time to plan for it. I don't want to say at least, but where you're at right now, you do have some time to ramp up, whether it's the guys behind them, and then you do have the transfer portal if needed. So you don't ever want to lose one of your best players and smartest guys and the guy that sealed the Ohio State game and everything else. But they do have some time to at least uh, plan about what they might do back there. If there's yeah. not, it's not a silver lining, it's just that's what it is. I, I don't know who's going to replace Sal Rodmore. I don't know who – who you can come over and who you can get to come out and and put us in that kind of experience. Uh, like I said, we we might have to go to an offensive receiver um, that might have to make a switch to the defensive side. I don't I don't know. We'll we'll see. Let's let's let uh, spring ball. And that's why I'm so jealous of you guys back in Michigan being able to go to uh, practice to see these kind of these guys. Uh, I'd love to see that, but uh, we're gonna find out. The, the coach is gonna find out. Who's going to be able to not build the shoes completely, but uh, uh, get us in the right position? There you go. All right. Well, Jerry, we'll get to some more football as we answer some of your questions. But we do have some breaking news, and we will answer this question in 10 minutes. I see this is a fact from um, Josh Henschke, the publisher at the Maize and Blue Review, Michigan has a new defensive line coach, and his name is Lou Esposito. So we will get to that. Jerry, I know you're familiar with Esposito, so we will get a thought or two on the new Michigan defensive line coach from you. But we wanted to talk Michigan hockey. The Wolverines are down at the Gateway Arch in St. Louis, and they're getting ready to to take on North Dakota tonight after it's a lot of – it reminds me of back in the day, you know, Michigan to play in the GLI, the Great Lakes Invitational. You'd have, you know, Western and Michigan State, and then you'd have Michigan and Michigan Tech. Well, this side, it's uh, Western and Michigan State who are playing in the opener. And then afterwards, you know, it'll be Michigan and uh, North Dakota. And I talked to Red Berenson on Tuesday when Dusty May, by the way, that was a nice prediction by you. And they got the guy that you wanted in, in Dusty May two weeks ago, I asked Jerry who he wanted. He said, I want Dusty May. And, you know, in Michigan was able to deliver him. but Red Berenson, the former Michigan hockey coach was um, at that press conference. And I was able to talk to him about 10 minutes. And uh, he said, as, as entertaining, he thinks as the game is going to be with Michigan and North Dakota, they they play a similar type game transition. They know how to get the puck out of their own end. He thinks it's going to be a, a great game. He said he also thinks Michigan State and Western is going to be the same kind of thing. He said it, it's just going to be a dandy of what is going to be on tap uh, down there at St. Louis in the uh, in the Blues uh, practice facility that they'll be playing in. Well, that, that's what uh, grabbed me at first. You know, I, I um. I started to look into some of the hockey, uh, get some a uh, little bit more information on the hockey. And a good friend of mine who I graduated with and played uh, hockey at the same time I played football, Mark Champ, uh, uh, honest Mark Champ, told me about the arena in St. Louis that this was uh, one in, uh, during the COVID year, you know, year, and this contract was one uh, during the COVID year when we didn't know who was going to be able to go in and watch games and if we were going to be able to get those stadiums packed again. And, and so uh, the St. Louis uh, blues practice facility was secured for this region. And so now you got Michigan state Western 
Yeah, you got Michigan and uh, uh, North Dakota playing in a um, St. Louis practice arena that uh, holds about 3,000 people. You, When you put that in perspective, again, from my uh, um, informant, Mark Champ, we average around 12,000 uh, or 6,000 uh, Michigan. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. The, the schools average around six, 7,000 um, per game, and now they're going to be going in uh, 3,000 uh, facilities. So it's uh, that that's the first thing that jumps out at you at this, uh, this regional hockey tournament. Um, the next thing, I love the fact that uh, we're going in with the number one power play. I don't like the fact that we're – that uh, state's got the uh, the goalie that everybody wants, but uh, we do have the power play, uh, and, and that could be a major um, um, a major ticket for us. Yeah, no doubt. When you're the the best power play, a lot of times, you know, if we had a coach on here and start talking about what is it going to come down to, the first thing I would guess that he would say is goaltending, and then you're going to say special teams and you know power play and penalty kill, and you know Michigan with the best power play that will put some pressure on North Dakota to stay out of the box. And, you know, cause the Wolverines can beat you if you give them too many chances there. Yeah. You know, the thing with the practice facility, you know, red was saying that the, it's a low ceiling and, you know, so you're going to have half the crowd and then knowing that it's Western and Michigan state and, and, and Michigan state, you know, they're the number one seed. I would imagine there'd be a lot of Spartans that'll be making the trip down you know, to St. Louis, and if they're staying around, I, I don't know how many. I'm thinking that it's going to be more of a North Dakota because they're green and white. Michigan State's green and white, and this is going to be a little bit like a uh, like a road game, I would guess, for Michigan. Not a pure road game because the Wolverines will get some of those tickets, but you know, only three thousand available, and a lot of those Spartans will be uh, parading around like North Dakota fans. So uh, you know that part. Is something that they're going to have to deal with. You know, the, the, the one thing about Michigan, though, Denny, as you well know, we travel well. They do. So, they do. Uh, we're going. We're going to. We're going to have our fan base there. And you know, we did lose to Michigan. We did lose the state um, in overtime at their place. So this is a neutral place, and uh, and and we'll we'll see what happens. Great we'll point. In Mount Ice Arena. You know, Red was saying that he thought that was the best atmosphere they had ever seen up there at Mount Ice Arena. So that experience. Michigan could have easily won that game. There was a controversial call. Right. Obviously, you get into overtime, either team can win it. The way Michigan's playing right now, they are playing their best hockey that they have played all year long. They played great uh, in Minneapolis against Minnesota, winning uh, that game the weekend before. So uh, if they play that way, like they played almost a perfect game when I watched them play against uh, Minnesota, and they played well against Michigan State as well. So they can win these, uh, they can win tonight. And uh, obviously they can go right back. You'd love to see them uh, take down. Nothing would be better than taking down Michigan State to get to the Frozen Four. I like. We well, want you know, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, Denny, we might not have been in this position. I mean, we 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 started getting hot a few weeks ago. Uh, swept Notre Dame uh, in in uh, uh, South Bend, uh, beat uh, Minnesota um, to get in. So uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, we weren't looking this good. So we're, we're, we're getting hot at the right time. Yeah. The only question about that Notre Dame was at Yost, but the way that Notre Dame, they had played really well at Yost. It was like, it was playing in South Bend, the record that they had had over the last two years or uh, so at, uh, in Ann Arbor, it might've felt like that. So uh, I thought it was, I thought there was one game. Was it the weekend before? That uh, they were in South Bend. Uh, you I know thought what? I was... thought it was all at Michigan. So now I'm sitting here and I could be wrong. So you know better than me, Danny. Well, you know I don't know what. Now I correct you. Now you're coming back. I would put my money on both of those games. Having been, uh, I know they play Michigan State. They'll go home and home, and they'll go down to Detroit. But normally it's both. Uh, if you're playing ND, even though it's pretty close, it'll be uh, at Yost. But hey, if somebody knows for sure, they'll correct us here on the yeah, feed. Absolutely. From the six seven hundred people that are watching right now. Uh, they'll be able to tell us. All right, uh, Jerry, are you ready to answer some questions? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, you got a question, you got a point. Let's uh, see it. Um, the feedback. Richard starts us off, and he says he knows J.D. He's not talking about Jaden Denigal. He's talking about right. Jaden Davis. Yep. He says he's a true freshman. How about a package for him? 
because they did have a package for JJ McCarthy, which is a which is a good point. Like I wouldn't think they would, but then you know here they did have one for for JJ and uh, Jaden Davis is pretty highly rated. So what are the chances that they would have a a package for um, the f- true freshman? Um, that's going to be tough in my opinion. Now, because you're looking at three quarterbacks now instead of two, and um, you know th- this young th- this young man coming out of South Carolina has got a lot of talent, and a lot of people are uh, hot on him, and and uh, um, a lot of good feelings on him. But he's still a freshman, and he's going to be uh, looking at Texas. I think it's best for him to be sitting and watching at least in the beginning. Uh, it's going to be tough putting a member. JJ was uh, given a package because we only had one in front of him, Kate. Now we got two in front of the um, uh, uh, Jaden, and uh, that's going to be tough to have a third package ready for him. Yeah, I would add that McCarthy, a lot of the snaps that he took was mostly he was a runner. Uh, he yeah, you know, he right. did throw the ball a little bit. Everybody remembers the first game was the amazing throw that he made, but a lot of times he was coming in there in short yardage situations and getting some of those snaps. So uh, I could see it being a – a uh, if Denigal won the job, I could see a package uh, on short yardage situation or goal line with Orgy because we all know right. for right. one thing that we know for sure is that that Orgy can can run, right? And that he's physical and strong, right? Oh, so I think that they're going to be. Uh, this isn't some profound prediction or anything else. Uh, you, I like to say that he reminds me of uh, the quarterback from the Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen Hurts. And we know that they have the Philly, they, they do the brotherly shove. And because of the strength of orgy, I think Michigan will be unleashing that on teams this year, but that's just a guess, but I'm saying it because I think it's going to happen. Now I think, that, I think a quarterback power play is going to be real tough for people to stop for uh, um, three or less. Uh, right. With Orgy running the power play, a quarterback power play, that's going to be a real tough. Um, you know, you're 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 basically a linebacker on linebacker with our yeah. quarterback running the ball. And what did Michigan do last year? It, it, they would be in a third and eight. They had run the ball. They had run the ball a lot right. Right. on third and eight because they knew if they got it down to fourth and three that they were going to go for it anyways. And it was a little bit like the Lions. The, the Lions, where they would do kind of the same thing. Like they would run the ball because they knew they were going to go for right. it on fourth down. That's right. The Lions were a little bit ahead of the curve on the NFL, and Michigan obviously was uh, as well. And when Sharon Moore, if there's one thing, I'm not arguing about, you know, uh, you know, it, it was all him or anything else, but he was the coach and he was calling the plays. He was calling the plays anyways. He went for it a lot on fourth down right. when he was in there. Against Penn State, against Maryland. So we, I think that is going to continue. Uh, yeah. Hadley's Comet is coming in once every couple months. You know, he sends a message in and he says, the Michigan hockey game tonight is on ESPNU and ESPN Plus. Do you know if you want to watch on Plus if you have to pay for it? Now, when I went to the website, it said it was on ESPN Plus. I went downstairs. Uh, I have charter cable, and I looked to see where it was, and it said it was on ESPNU, which I get. Uh, but the website says ESPN Plus. I have Hulu, and Hulu, along with that, gives me ESPN Plus. So I don't. I wouldn't have to pay for it. I don't think either way. But if you don't have Hulu and if you don't have ESPNU, I do believe that you would have to pay for it. On ESPN Plus, that is my guess. I don't know, Jerry, if you know all that cable. I would say, Denny, I, I, you know, it's nice to have all these options on TV, but sometimes yeah. it's a little bit confusing too. You got that right. Uh, who will sub for Rod Moore? I'll give you two names. We know Macari Page is out there. It started last year. Uh, Zeke Berry and Brandon Hillman are the guys that I would uh, guess that would be in the mix right now as safety. Um, I, I can't think of the young man's name. I'm going to look it up right now on the roster. Um, kid I, out know, of I know who you're going to say. Yeah, because he's out of Youngstown. DJ Waller. I, I think he's a corner. DJ, DJ Waller is a big, big kid. And I remember when he was being recruited out of uh, Youngstown. Everybody was after him. Very talented. And if I remember correctly, 
he was recruited as an athlete. He wasn't recruited as any uh, particular position. And uh, uh, I like his size. That's the one I like his size a lot. And uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's competing for that position as well. Yeah, I, I, like I said, corner, but you're right. He was an athlete, and he does look more like a safety. And now yeah, – 6'3", it's safety. 6'3", it's sa – or, you know, hey, what, what, what if we moved it – what if we move them to the corner and, and, and move one of our corners back? So, you know, like I said earlier, there's a lot of talent in that room. They're, they, it's just now who's going to fit the bill as being the quarterback in the secondary. That's, that's the, that's the question. We talked about how the quarterbacks are looking in that first segment, Michael, you want to go through the first 10 minutes. We were all over those quarterbacks. Here's Mark. He loves that hockey talk. And he's also talking about Khalil Mullings. He says it was really his first year as an experienced back. Hard to get playing time behind Corum and Edwards. He says, if I'm Orgy, Tuttle, I like him on a delayed route or picking up a blitz. Talking about Khalil Mullins. Well, Mullins, you know, you're right. He didn't have a lot of opportunities behind Corum and uh, and uh, 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 Edwards. But when he did touch the ball, he gained some pretty good yards. Uh, I remember the big play against Nebraska, kind of busted that game open, um, made a couple big runs. I think he made a couple big runs in the Rose Bowl, if I'm not mistaken. So Mullins, uh, yeah, limited uh, limited experience, but the, the experience we've seen with them has been pretty uh, pr pretty productive. All right, Jerry, Michigan has a new – Defensive line coach in the Maize and Blue Review has confirmed what Newber is saying here. Lou Esposito, who was on Western Michigan's um, sideline as an assistant coach and defensive coordinator and worked with uh, with defensive ends. So that's kind of uh, – you've got a connection with uh, Western Michigan. Is that right? Isn't that right? Right. Anthony, my son, was uh, the uh, 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 GA last year and uh, – Spent three years before that as a student assistant under uh, under Lou. Uh, I'll, I'll say this: um, I, I think the players play very hard for Lou Esposito. I think he's a likable coach. I I, I don't know um, uh, the language and all that, but it seems like his uh, his kids play uh, hard for him. Um, you know, right now the number one defense alignment on the draft board from what I understand, is a young man by the name of Fisk. I'm not sure of his first name. Well, he was at Western Michigan before last year. And, um, you know, those, those are the, that's, that, that tells you a little bit about what Lou is capable of doing as far as recruiting. When you get a guy who played, you know, Florida State went after. I mean, they went after him big time, and now he's the number one. And I saw him, and he was a good-looking kid all along through. All the way through, and and you know Esposito recruited him, um, so we 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 can pretty much assured that he can recruit, and the, I think the kids are going to respond to him. Um, and, and the other thing, and I'll bet you this had something to do with the hire, is from all accounts, I'm I'm hearing a lot of Wink being a little bit more aggressive with his blitz packages than Mentor and McDonald, and. Um, when I, when I would uh, watch uh, Esposito's defenses, I, I would tend to say that that is pretty much in line with uh, Wink. I, I think I think um, Esposito uh, liked blitzing a lot. So as far as in the coaches' rooms, I think uh, there, there's going to be a, a real connect there between the two. So um, it's a good hire. Uh, it, it's uh, – I think there were some good good candidates out there, but I think uh, Lou Esposito is a good hire, and I think uh, kids are going to play well for him, and I think uh, um, they're going to like playing for him. Esposito played his college ball at Memphis. Yep. And then it was uh, off to St. Joseph's. Yep. Then Western on the defensive line. Ferris State as a defensive quarter. That means right. he worked with uh, what, Anise, right? Yep. Yes. I like yep. Anise. Didn't um, – uh, Dylan uh, Roney, who was uh, Michigan's defensive line analyst last year, I believe he was at Ferris under Anise as well. So right, there right, 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 absolutely, yeah. No, right. and, and, then, and then he also coached at Davenport, helped get that program off the ground, and um, defense coordinator at uh, Western for the last uh, few years, and and uh, that defense was pretty sound. There were they, a lot of good personnel, and. Um, 
um, did a nice job. So I, I, I think it's a uh, very decent hire, yeah. Great point about the uh, the kid that was at Western that transferred to Florida State who's the number one uh, defensive uh, end or lineman uh, projected to go in the NFL draft. That's a nice feather in your cap. Obviously, he knows – the state of Michigan Absolutely. and you know, he's, he's been around and, and I like, you know, if I'm just, we're just talking, which we are just like Lamar Morgan was a defensive coordinator down at the university of Louisiana. Now he comes in as a position club coach, having a, a defensive coordinator background, like Esposito and coming. I like that too. I mean, I like guys that were coordinators that are now coming in uh, that, that gives them a little extra feel for what's going out there. I don't know if that's that, 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 you know, now we have four coaches on the defense that have called defensive signals. So, you know, there's a little bit more experience there too. So yeah, I think uh I think Lou Esposito is a good hire. Yes. All right, there it is. That's the news. People have been wondering about that defensive line coach. Michigan has one and Lou Esposito. Nuber with a question for you, Jerry. He says, with all of the coaching and player turnover, do you expect an adjustment? period next season there you go how about that an adjustment well, you know i'll tell you what i like when i come in as a new coach is a lot of talent <laughs> yeah. okay and so i'm coming in as the defensive line coach and i got three guys that have been uh, uh starting in those two positions uh for a couple of years now i feel pretty good i feel pretty good that we got three or four guys that can play the edge solid have great experience, have made huge plays, a secondary. So as far as that that period, let the horses run. you got talent. That makes up for a lot of gray area. Yeah, I think the adjustment is going to be for, for Michigan fans. The last two years, they looked at this schedule, and everybody was anticipating the start of the season as always, but they were at no threat to lose a game for months. For the last two years, it was like, okay, you know, East Carolina, UNLV, BG, okay, bring them on. And then you're looking at, you know, Nebraska, Minnesota, ooh, maybe, you know. But uh, the adjustment is, is uh, as Frank puts down, it's Texas. And they're coming in, and that's going to be a game. They've got their starting quarterback. They were in the college football playoff. Uh, playoff last right, year. right. Right, and they're and they're the only ones that come back with that uh, that combination. But again, Texas is losing a lot up front on the defensive side, losing some uh, offensive personnel, losing the backfield and receivers, and they're coming to Ann Arbor playing in front of one hundred eleven thousand people. So, um, as far as that adjustment period, like I, I'm trying to you know trying to be as good as possible here. I like coming in as a new coach with a lot of talent. That's a lot better than uh, coming in with uh, uh, trying to make things up. Uh, and, oh, by the way, and, oh, by the way, we also know that our system is basically the same system with Wink Martindale. So, yeah, the adjustment period is there, but we're coming in with a lot of experience from the previous systems with a lot of talented player from the previous systems. I don't think it's going to be much of a problem. And to your point there, the offense, it's going to be sure they're going to have a different quarterback and, and most of the names are going to be different as uh, all the starters are gone last year and set, except uh, Colston Loveland. But uh, Sharon Moore is going to smash. He's running the ball. I mean, that's what's going to happen. You know, I mentioned uh, Orsi throwing the ball 20 times. You know, Shiro Moore might be watching this. He's going to say, 20? We're going to be running the ball 10 times. We'll throw the ball 10 times right. against Texas because we're going to be jamming it down their their throats and protecting the defense. And once we get up, it's going to be like, as uh, you'll remember, three years ago against Washington when they ran for, you know, 350 yards or whatever it was. Uh, it might be another one of those kind of non-conference slates. Uh, all right, Jerry, a couple more questions for you. I see. I see. Well, uh, is it account 22? Where's account 22? D-line oh. will smash teams. Ewers is in for a long day. Let me tell you something. Like I said last year, I saw, and I keep going back to it, but, you know, sometimes it makes sense. I saw Denegal go against J.J., and Graham was on Denegal's team, and J.J. had problems. And so two account 22s uh, post, yeah, yours is going to see something he hasn't seen in his career. He's going to see that up-the-middle pressure 
from Grant and Graham and Benny that he has, he probably hasn't seen. So yeah, that's that's a problem for him. Uh, well, here's Mark with a question that is on a lot of people's mind. I want to see how you handle this one, Jerry. Do you think Michigan's quarterback is on the roster right now? What plausible transfer is really a better option? Mark adding, he says, I'd say none. I I I, I think McCord would have been something interesting on that team. When he goes to Syracuse, I think you take his name off. I don't think you can come uh, from Syrac- from Ohio State to Syracuse and now to Michigan. That that I think that that's done. Um, Manning is the name that uh, a lot of people are throwing out there that might transfer because of Ours. Um, you know, other than that, our quarterback's on the roster. I think. Yeah, the the best case scenario for Michigan is if they come out of spring and they feel comfortable enough that they're going to go with the guys that they have. That's good news. Yeah, that, that would be you know, nice. Do that. The other part is that it's unpredictable what's going to happen in other teams' spring practices. There might be somebody that's sitting out there that we don't know about that is just had a hell of a spring ends up rising over the depth chart and some starting quarterback is sitting there. That's a pretty big name. And he's like, uh, I want out, you know, cause you can just hit the eject button. And if things weren't looking as great at Michigan and he gets on the phone saying, Hey, you know, can I get in and compete? And, you know, so it could happen. So, but again, the best case scenario is that Michigan, you know, stays put, they like where they're at and they don't have to go portaling for a QB, but there's also a lot of, uh, you know, moving parts when it comes down to uh, QBs in spring and with the transfer portal, there could be uh, Jerry mentioned, you know, the big names, but there could be another big name or two out there. I, you know, uh, I would like to come out of the spring, not showing our hand on who the quarterback is. And that way we've got two guys that we can pretty much count on being back for the fall and uh, finishing up the competition in the fall. I, I got a feeling that we're going to have a good idea coming out of spring who the quarterback is. I just hope we don't reveal it until late fall. I'll tell you this. This is just a, uh, a thought, and I don't know if this is how Michigan is uh, thinking or if this is even part of their game plan, but if they do go through spring and they – are thinking, you know, we're a quarterback away from, you know, competing for a Big Ten championship again. And they just hired, a, you know, they, they've got a, an a assistant recruiting director they required, an NLI GM. They sit around and saying, what's in our war chest for NIL? Let's throw it at this quarterback because we can go out there and we can go buy ourselves a quarterback in free agency in the transfer portal. That's the game now. So, uh, you know, Michigan, be careful, be, 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 care, be careful with that philosophy because I don't think it worked real well with USC. Okay. And right. I think, and I think there's, there, there, there's some other people that you're going to tick off in that room. You all of a sudden bring in somebody who hasn't been in Michigan and you're going to offer them a lot of money. You better be able to explain it to some of these uh, veterans that you didn't offer that money to. So, yeah, you know, Jared, it's a good point. Know. That's like uh, the, uh, I think that's the last uh, you know, the emergency resort, like, okay. Cause if they do go that way and they're paying money, everybody's going to be in there like, Whoa, what about us? So Where's my money. Yeah. So that, that's the, uh, you know, push the button. That's the panic button, but it, it is a, a, a button that is, could be played or could be pushed by Michigan. Uh, again, hopefully they don't have to, uh, to do that. All right, we've got a final question, and it comes from FR. We don't get this far in the spring with already being without already being comfortable with the next QB. They were taking JJ off the field against OSU and in the playoffs to put Orgy in. It's been pretty obvious who it is. So FR is saying, guys, it's Alex Orgy is going to be the QB. Well, you know. It's okay to put Alex Orgy in with JJ as your starter because JJ can throw the ball and Alex is is your, your run threat. But um, when you're going to put Orgy out there um, from A to Z, and it, we'll see. I'm I'm not I'm not sure about that yet. So, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna figure out who's gonna come out of this spring and uh, 
and, and going with the lead uh, going in the fall. I'm going to give you a final thought here, Jerry, and it's back to where we started with the quarterbacks. There's a lot of folks that they'll watch the spring game and they'll say, they'll I'll roll their eyes a little bit. And they'll say, oh, you know, how many times have we been around and watched the spring game and the guy play really well in spring? I'll admit that we, that I and, and others will put too much stock in whatever happens with the quarterbacks of the spring game. Meanwhile, you've got a, you know, a three, four quarterback race, maybe. I know what uh, FR just said about Orgy, but. I know it's just one of 15 practices, but there's also going to be 60,000 people in the stands, and this is going to be televised live on Fox, and you're the defending champs. I got to believe, just like, uh, Jerry, if you and I went out on the basketball court right now, just you and I, I could be knocking down free throw after free throw. I wouldn't be surprised if I hit 18 out of 20. But if you and I went down to – where they're going to be playing the regional tonight against uh, Purdue at the little Caesars arena. And they had 20,000 and they're all screaming at me. And they said, Hey, here's a million dollars to make 15 out of 20. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot different when I'm standing up at the line and throwing the free throws. My point is that I, it is, it's one of 15, but with all the eyeball with a million eyeballs on you and 60,000 live, it's a lot different than, than throwing the ball over at Glick. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. You got to be good all the time, Denny. Some players are good in practice. Some players are good in the games. We want them good all the time. So we're going to find out. Okay. Uh, the final point is from Roland, who says, have a good weekend, Wolverines, and happy Easter. That's right. Everybody have a, a good Friday and a great uh, Easter weekend. Jerry, you have uh, won yourself down there in the Sunshine State. Thanks, Denny. Hail to the victors. Love the uh, love the uh, audience. This is great. Love the interaction. It's been great. And uh, um, looking forward to uh, getting back into Michigan and uh, hopefully uh, getting to watch some film. I'm hoping that I get to watch. I'm going to watch some hockey. Uh, I'm hoping that I also get to watch some hockey on Sunday because I would love to see. I don't really care if it's Michigan State, uh, you know, either Western or Michigan State, but the important part, let's see Michigan play one of those two teams on Sunday to go to the Frozen Four. That would be awesome. Go Blue. We got to get that power play to, to uh, support that number one ranking, and uh, let, let's uh, let's get back to the Frozen Four. Get that first goal. That's